Alright, so this is a little review of chapter 7. Uh, we're going to start with this one here. It has to do with diagonals. What is the name of the polygon with 65 diagonals? So for this, we need to know our formula for the amount of diagonals that we have. Well, that would be n times n minus 3 over 2. So the number of diagonals equals n times n minus 3 over 2. Make sure you know those formulas. All right, All of them are important. So it has 65 diagonals. What I can do here is I can take 65 and set it equal to n times n minus 3 over 2. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to multiply by 2 on both sides. I get 130 equals n, and I'll distribute it, so we'll get n squared minus 3n. All right. Now, what it looks like I have here is a quadratic equation, which I know I can solve by factoring. So what I'll have here is n squared minus 3n minus 130 equals 0. And I need to go ahead and factor this or use the quadratic equation or something like that. So this one's not too bad to factor. Uh, what I notice here is, and if we use this method, I think a lot of you like this, we multiply to one, negative 130 and I want to add the negative 3. Well, I know that 10 and 13 multiply to 130, and if I want to get negative 3 when I add, I'm going to put that negative in front of the 13. So I'm going to have n plus 10 and n minus 13. That equals 0. So when I solve for n, I'm going to get n equals negative 10. I'll also get n equals 13. Well, I know I can't have negative 10 sides. That wouldn't make sense. But I could have 13 sides. So we're going to call this one here as a 13 gone. Right, that's one that we don't need to know the names, the name of. Remember, it's basically 3 through 12. We don't really talk about 11, though. But any of those, you'll need another name. But for 13, it's a 13 gone. All right, so when I'm approaching a problem like this, where I have multiple variables, I like to see if there's an easier way of doing it rather than setting up a system of equations. Because that, that's kind of a pain at times. But what I notice here is that I have these two guys here that only have x. I also have this one. And what I know from my exterior angle theorem is that these two added together equal my exterior angle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the 3x minus 100 plus 2x plus 15 and set it equal to 3x plus 5 and I'm going to solve for x. So I can combine my like terms. I get 5x on the left minus 85 equals 3x plus 5. So I can subtract 3x and get 2x, add 85 and get 90, and I get x equals 45. So now that I have x equals 45, I can figure out this angle right here. Well, 3 times 45 will give me 135, plus 5 gives me 140. So I get 1, oops, 140 for that angle. And I know that all three angles of a triangle mean this guy here, this guy here, and this guy here should add up to 180. So what I'm going to do is take 2y plus 3y plus 140 and set equal to 180. So I'm going to get 5y equals 40 and y equals Eight. So now I have my x and my y. I have answered the problem. All right, for this problem, we're going to draw a diagram to help us uh, see what's going on. You don't necessarily have to have one, but it is helpful. So it says the measure of an exterior angle of a regular polygon is twice that of an interior angle. What is the name of the polygon? So I'm just going to draw a random polygon. I'm only going to draw part of it, uh, however many sides there are. I don't know. We're going to try and find that out. So I've drawn some dashed lines in here. This is my exterior angle, and then in here is my interior angle. All right. Now, it says that the measure of the exterior angle is twice that of the interior angle. So if the interior angle is, say, x, that means that the exterior angle is going to be 2x. Makes sense. It's double. Well, what I know about these two angles here is that 
this forms a straight angle which is 180 degrees. So I can take 2x plus x and set that equal to 180 and then solve for x. So we get 3x equals 180 divided by 3 oops, and we get x equals 60. So that means if x equals 60 that's the measure of the interior angle. <clears throat> What's the name of the polygon? Well there's a couple ways we can go about solving this one. Some of you might already know and, and realize, well, it's 60 degrees, so it must be an equilateral triangle, and you'd be correct. However, if we want to use a formula, we can do that. We know that the measure of one interior angle, and then we can use our formula for 180, it would be 180 times n minus 2 divided by n. Because 180 times n minus 2 would give us the sum of the interior angles, but if we divide it by the number of sides, then we end up with just one interior angle. So now I can solve for n. So I multiply by n on both sides, we get 60n equals 180n minus 360. So I'm running out of room there, guys. And then if I subtract 60, I get 120n. And over here I have positive 360. If we solve for n, we get n equals 3. And look at that, it's a triangle. Now the reason why I went through those steps is maybe it'll be something like <clears throat> you know, an octagon or a nonagon or something bigger, and we don't really realize with the angle measure what it is exactly. But this one was pretty easy to figure out. It's a, sim it's a very familiar measure, so it makes it a little easier. But this is how you would do it using the formula. So in case you have one that you don't know what it is, you can use the formula to figure it out. All right, for this one, <coughs> question is asking, e or it says each measure of the interior angle of a regular polygon is 156. Name the polygon. Now, we have our interior angle. One thing I think I told you guys, told you guys in class is it's a lot easier to deal with the exterior. Well, if the interior is 156, I can find out my exterior angle by just subtracting that from 180. And what I end up with here is going to be 24 degrees. So that's my exterior angle. Now the exterior, the reason why I'm using the exterior angle is because it's an easier formula. We have 24 degrees equals 360 divided by n, and we know when we multiply this all out, if we multiply by n, you get 24n equals 360 divided by 24, and we get n equals 15. So I get a 15 gun. Now you don't always have to use the exterior angle uh, formula, but I just think it's easier, it's up to you. All right, so in triangle X, Y, Z, the sum of the angles of X and Y is 112. The sum of the measures of the angles of angles Y and Z is 125. Find the measure of the smallest angle. Now, I'm going to draw another picture for this one. So we have X, Y, and Z. And, and to illustrate the sum of X and Y, I'm just going to write 112 over here to help us out. And for Y and Z, I'm going to write 125 over here. Well, I know if <coughs> X and Y equals 112 or whatever's left over for Z, I can just do 180 minus 112. And I'm left with 68. And then I can do the same thing for X. 180 minus 125. And I'm left with 55. So from here... I know x is 55, z is 68, I can also find out y. I would just add 55 plus 68, and I get 123, and I can subtract that from 180, so 180 minus 123, and that equals 57. So now I know, it says find the measure of the smallest angle. So the measure of the smallest angle would be 55 degrees. We always want to make sure that we're answering the question that's being asked. Otherwise, you will lose some points. Alrighty, so find the measures of X and Y. D and E are midpoints. So D and E being midpoints is very important because that tells me that 
DE is a midline, and I know that DE is then parallel to CB. And the reason why that is important is because I have angles that are congruent. So these two angles are congruent, which means that this guy is 70. So there's already a lot of information I know, and I can easily solve for X at this point. So I have 60 plus 70. And that gives me 130. So that means that 180 minus 130, because there's 180 degrees in the triangle, gives me 50. And I know that x equals 50. So there's one of my answers. Now the next one, I need to solve for y. And what I know is that de is half the length of cb. So in order to be the same length as cb, I'd have to double it, correct? So what I'm going to do here is 2 times 3y plus 5. And I set that equal to 9y plus 1. Now sometimes I get a little confused on that, like which one do I multiply by 2, but you got to think about it. If DE is half the length of CB, if I want to make it the full length, I need to double it. So I need to mu multiply this one here by 2. <clears throat> so if I distribute, I get 6y plus 10 equals 9y plus 1. So I'm going to get 9 equals 3y, and we get y equals 3. Bibbidi-boppidi, we're done.